Welcome to another edition of Dan Factoids. Today we'll be talking about diving or resuming diving after having suffered decompression illness. Keep watching. We received the following letter from a member regarding this question. The letter read, I often find myself searching the literature on guidelines about diving after decompression illness. There's a lot about how to avoid it and chambers and so on, but what about getting back to diving? What are the long-term effects on health? How long should you stay out of the water? When is it safe to go back? And so on. I've been diving for over 16 years and suffered moderate decompression illness 10 years ago. Enough to get me rushed to the nearest clinic, but I didn't need to go to a chamber. Nevertheless, I felt I lacked the knowledge on how to follow up on the incident and when I could get back in the water. Well, first of all, I want to thank the member for their honesty and just coming forward and asking the question that I am sure many divers are asking. After all, there are several incidents of decompression illness every year. One of the most difficult things for divers to face is admitting they have symptoms. Because not only is there a certain stigma sometimes attached to it wrongfully, but it also would disrupt the plans or holiday plans of other divers. So there are a lot of reasons why divers might go into denial or seek other explanations. But there is a right time and it's better to seek advice early than to wait, particularly if you are in a remote location. Wait and see is all very well but it's easier to arrange an evacuation in the morning, especially over long distances, than it would be close to dusk. So that's the first part. And now regarding return to diving. As we famously say in all things in medicine, it depends. Because no type of decompression illness is identical. So it depends on specific symptoms, that the diver experiences and their duration, as well as the severity themselves. Only 70% of divers experience immediate relief and recovery upon recompression. 30% only have partial or sometimes even only temporary relief. And the symptoms may last several weeks after treatment. So one needs to weigh up very different elements. How severe were the symptoms? What was the delay to recompression? Were the symptoms mild or major? Are they residual symptoms? Is there the presumption that there is still inflammation that needs to settle? All of these things weigh in to the decision. Now occasionally mild so-called constitutional decompression illness that responds within 10 minutes of recompression is fully resolved after a single treatment of decompression illness and is verified as not being neurological in any way by a physician trained in diving medicine would allow a diver to return to diving within 48 hours. That's in a recreational setting. Our diving regulations actually even permit that within 24 hours. But for recreational diving, we would say the bare minimum with complete resolution would be 48 hours. Now, if it is more serious than that, and with that we mean anything involving something other than a skin rash that is mild and we're not talking about marbling but just a skin rash we're talking about slight swelling of a limb tiredness slight headache unless it's one of those constitutional symptoms then you need to wait at least four weeks at the least it would be two but we recommend four weeks 
and that is if it's uncomplicated decompression illness. In other words, if the person still has symptoms after four weeks, then they should not consider return to diving at that stage. And either way, after four weeks, the diver needs to be cleared by a physician trained in diving medicine. You do not want to go to someone who has no experience in treating divers with decompression illness because return to diving with some residual symptoms definitely increase the chances of not only getting decompression illness again but possibly getting a more severe form. So we do encourage divers to delay if they've suffered decompression illness and if it's extremely mild and responds promptly to either surface oxygen and that is completely or after a single recompression verified as cured and non-neurological by a diving physician two days otherwise four weeks please make sure that you do seek the advice of a diving physician after all diving is supposed to be fun and we want to practice safe guidelines so I hope that's answered your question and thank you very much for asking it. I'm sure it's a question on many divers lips. So until next time, safe diving.